Hey everybody, good to see you again. Today we've got another great video for you. Uh, it is July 20th. Yeah, we've been up here four months exactly now. Today we came up here March 20th. And things are growing. We have stuff growing all over the place here. <laughs> yes, and Ben's hair has <laughs> been on. growing. <laughs> it's very long now. I need to give it a, a bit of a trim. <laughs> yeah, it's about time. But yeah, we've got things growing everywhere. We've got some daisies behind us here. There's a flower for my beautiful wife. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> In our last video, we talked about your liver and how it's starving for glucose and mineral salts. If you missed it, be sure to go check it out. It's called Your Liver is Starving. Yeah, it was a good one. And so in this video, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about the bloodstream. And we're going to be talking about how long fats remain in the bloodstream after you've eaten that fat. Yes. And which then leads to a starving liver. Starving liver, so. So in order for the glucose to benefit your liver, it needs to be free from any tagalongs. And tagalongs are anything that contain fat. So let's say you wake up in the morning and you're ready for breakfast, ready to start your day. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cook yourself a nice meal before you head off to work or head off to start your day. And uh, that nice meal consists of bacon and eggs and an apple or cereal and an orange or a fruit bowl with, with, uh, with some toast and butter on the side. And you think that because you're incorporating fruit into your breakfast that you're going to do your liver good. Well, that's not the case here. Because you're eating the fats with the glucose, the glucose is never making its way to the liver because the fats are preventing it from going through the bloodstream and into the liver. Yep. Or let's say for lunch, you have a salad with some chicken on it, or maybe it's a cob salad with eggs and bacon and some blue cheese dressing. Two hours later, you have some fruit or an apple as a snack, the glucose from that fruit is not going to make it to your liver, unfortunately, because the fats are still going to be in your bloodstream from that salad you had at noon. And that was me. I was I was a big Cobb dude. I Cobb used to, salad. I used to have my Cobb salads <laughs> every day for lunch, and I used to think, wow, I'm eating so healthy. But the mineral salts in the co in the salad weren't actually making it to the liver altogether. So it was like I was right because you were eating fats with it, mm -hmm. and then if let's say you had fruit later in the day, like I just said as an example, that glucose isn't making it to your liver. Yeah, totally. What about you? Did you have any lunchtime <laughs> favorites? <laughs> I was a big chicken Caesar salad girl. Yeah. I like Cobb salads too, but I was really into putting chicken on my salads um, and then having fruit later on and never knowing that my body wasn't totally absorbing. So it's important to know how long these types of fats stay in your bloodstream. That way you can make sure that you're getting that glucose to your liver. Yeah, and so let's go through them. Yeah, let's do it. So pork 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 products pork takes 12 to 16 hours to leave the bloodstream that's crazy right that's a long time <laughs> that's a long time and then you've got uh, other meat products you know so like your chicken or your beef uh, or your duck or fish you know all, stuff yeah. like that all animals all animal other animal meats those take uh, roughly three to six hours to leave the bloodstream and then there's there's still plant fats you know so even if you're doing things right there still are plant fats out there and those plant fats they take one to three hours to leave the bloodstream 
Yeah, so notice the range, right? So that range is really gonna depend on how bogged down your liver is. So if you're already eating a ton of fats, that means your liver is pretty bogged down and you're probably gonna be at that higher range, um, the higher number of that range. And it also depends if you have um, pathogens and t other toxins and things that your liver is really trying to work, trying to work on filtering out. That's gonna really depend on where you land at that range. Mm -hmm. And Anthony's no foods list. Go check it out. It's in all of his books. He outlines all the foods that either feed pathogens, bog down the liver, the foods you want to avoid. Yep. So that's the bloodstream. But let's talk about the troublemakers and how long it takes for those to leave your liver. And the troublemaker foods, if you're not fully aware of them, be sure to check them out in Anthony the Medical Medium's books. He lists them in all of his books. Yeah, so today we want to just focus on the foods. And so we just talked about the bloodstream. Let's talk about the liver. So eggs. I'm going to start with eggs because everybody likes their eggs. And not only do eggs feed viruses, but they take 90 days to leave the liver. Wow. It's a long time. That's three months. Yeah. Then there's dairy. Dairy contains hormones. Uh, eggs and meat products also contain hormones. And these hormones take about 90 days to leave your liver. Then there's also the high fats, like we were just saying. High fats leaving your liver really just depends on how um, bogged down or how fatty your liver is. Yeah, and then there's alcohol. And everybody likes to go out and drink some alcohol at social gatherings. We get it. We get it. We used to do that too. But the alcohol takes 90 days to leave the liver. And it hits all three layers of the liver. So it's really deep. The residue is deep in that liver. And there's alcohol in everything. There's alcohol on these hand sanitizers they're making us put on when... When we go into grocery stores, there's alcohol on stuff we put on our, our bodies, which then gets absorbed into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And then there's even alcohol with tinctures out there. So when you're getting your tincture, make sure, make sure that you're not getting an alcohol-based tincture because the alcohol then gets sent to the liver and then prevents the herbs from actually doing anything. Then there is something like vinegar. That takes about a month to leave your liver. Caffeine, that takes about a week to leave your liver. Yeah, and then there's salt. Salt is on everything. You go to restaurants, they use excessive salt on all of the food. You know, and some salt is okay. Salt in, in meat. A little salt here and there. I exactly. And we're talking like sea salt or Himalayan salt, you know, healthy salt, not table salt. But mm -hmm. salt takes 90 days to rid from the liver. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then there's things like gluten and corn. That takes also about 90 days to rid out of the liver. Yeah, and then there's pork, which we just talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And that actually can take a very long time it can take people up to a lifetime because pork is one of the hardest fats as we just talked about with the bloodstream it's one of the hardest fats to remove from the body yeah so bloodstream takes 12 to 16 hours for it mm -hmm. to leave but for it to actually because then your your liver is going to collect it it then takes it could take almost a lifetime for it to actually leave your liver yeah, and remember in these fat cells in your liver, these, this fat that's going in your body, all of these environmental toxins get absorbed into the fat. And then that becomes a, a constant food source for the pathogens. So that's another reason it's very important to start eliminating more of these fats. All right, and then the last one we're going to go over is going to blow your guys' mind. <laughs> Canola oil. This one takes six months to leave your liver six months Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a terrible terrible oil that you should avoid as much as possible it is terrible for your body and it is gmo as well 
A lot of restaurants use it. So make sure you are careful when you're going out to restaurants and just never use it at home because it's no good. Always ask if you go to restaurants, what oil are you using? Because nine times out of 10, it's canola oil or an oil that we shouldn't even be consuming, a non-plant-based oil. Okay, so you guys are probably thinking, how the heck do I eat? <laughs> if they're telling me not to have any fats, like how the heck am I supposed to eat? So stay tuned because our next video, and this is something that we've gotten a lot of requests for, is what do we eat in a day? Yeah, so we're going to take you through a day in the life of Ben and Ashley. With right? our food. Our food. And we might show you some of the farm because that's just fun. Yeah. But uh, we're going to take you through how we eat to feed that starving liver and take control of your life again because we've got pathogens in that liver we've got all these environmental toxins going on in the liver and we want to remove that stuff so we can get control of our health again yeah we want to make sure that our bodies are fully absorbing all of the nutrients so if you guys aren't subscribed already be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell to get notified every time we post a new video and then give us a little comment below Tell us what you're thinking about all this stuff. I know it can be a lot, and if you're new to the medical medium and this way of eating, it, it can be stressful. And we want to alleviate some of that stress and make it easy for you. So comment below. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know if we can help in any way. Yeah. We're here for you. You guys take it one day at a time. We will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.